got here is the chassis from an Apple Power Mac G4 from the year 2000. It is empty, there is no Apple hardware remaining inside. It would have had something like a 400 megahertz PowerPC CPU and some ATI Rage graphics probably. Antique old junk, but that antique old junk has gone. My plan is to fill this with some PC hardware. I'm intending to use this mini ITX motherboard with an Intel Core i5 processor and some decent graphics. And as you'll uh, possibly guess from that water block, I want to liquid cool the whole thing. The original Apple layout has the motherboard on this door here. The IO panel is there, it's fixed in place. So I've got to remove that. I've bought some hardware from LaserHive. They make this nifty conversion kit. So that's the replacement IO panel. And here we have a replacement panel for the power supply side of things. It's uh, built to accommodate an SFX power supply because I want to use a small power supply to give myself the maximum amount of space to work with. Once I decided to kick off this Power Mac G4 project, I noticed a couple of Power Mac G4s on sale on eBay as parts and therefore very, very cheap. This is a mirror drive G4, which is different. So we've got the original G4, which is what I've got. Then you get the Quicksilver, which is cosmetically uh, slightly smarter. And then you get the mirror drive. The cooling layout of the mirror drive is different to the earlier models, however, the layout with the hardware on the door, that is what Power Mac G4s look like. So optical drives at the front, power supply is up here, and this is a cooling fan. This is a socking great big cooler on the processor, and the air then flows straight out the back. So this is the final version of the Power Mac G4. The other part of my eBay buy is this, an original Power Mac G4, so the same chassis I've already got. The idea now is I drop the side panel and you see the original Apple Mac hardware. But no, someone's beat me to it. It's already got PC hardware installed. And they've done a totally gash job. They've hacked out the rear panel, slammed in uh, a motherboard mounting tray complete with motherboard. I'm not even sure what kind of motherboard. It's old Intel hardware and a processor, some sort of Dell hardware. And here we have a PC power supply hanging in place along with some cables. So this is a PC conversion in a Power Mac G4 chassis. The point here is this is not how I want to do the job. Before I can install the motherboard, I'm gonna to have to remove all these standoffs and lugs and whatnot. I'm gonna to have to open up the bottom of the chassis to allow some air to flow because I don't wanna be doing that later in the build. The key point here is I am not building a hacking tosh. I'm putting a Windows PC inside this rather glorious old Apple Power Mac chassis. First job is to remove the panels and strip down to the bare chassis. The rear I.O. panel is held in place with a number of rivets there and also here. So I'm going to start by drilling those out. This is the laser hive template for where I'm gonna put these standoffs to hold the motherboard. These bits and pieces with red tape on are gonna come off.
Now the door's been cleaned up, I've taped the laser hive template in place and we've got eight marked holes for motherboard standoffs. I'm going to use four of these for my mini ITX board, but it makes sense to drill all eight holes just in case I change my mind at a later date and go micro ATX. Remove the drilling template. IO panel in place. I haven't uh, attached these two screws yet. Just got to be pulling the panel off again quite shortly. And we've got four standoffs. Board goes in place like so. That's the two laser hive panels installed in a trial fit. In case it's not obvious, they've got their protective film on the plastics. So obviously that peels off when we're finished for the moment, leaving it on because you don't want to mark everything up. Motherboard and graphics card are installed uh, again as a temporary fit while we mark up where other things go. And we have an SFX power supply installed, which takes up very little space. Now the red tape denotes the areas that I think I can cut out of the case this shelf that extends all the way forward. Uh, for the time being, I'm gonna leave this piece at the back just as a support. The power supply could hang on its mounting screws, but let's give it some help. But the metal from here going forward, that can come out, which means some drilling and dremeling. And there's some metal to come out at the back. And then I'm gonna look at the bottom of the case because I'm gonna to have to start thinking about ventilation for when the system's up and running. After a fair amount of noise and a certain amount of shrieking steel, I've removed this much metal from the case and I'm ready to assemble the hardware. Laser hive panels installed, SFX power supply in place. Here we have our Super O Mini ITX motherboard. It's a Z370 chipset model. And we've got a Core i5-8600K in place. That's a Fantex C350 block on it and some G-Skill Sniper X memory. Uh, the SSD is not immediately obvious because it's on the back of the board, Samsung 960 Pro. The radiator is a 240mm black ice from Hardware Labs. The barrow logo is because it's mounted on this bracket so I can put it like so. We've got a pair of Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 fans on the bottom, 120 mils obviously because it's a 240 rad. So that can sit like so. The final piece of the cooling system is this uh, Aqua Computer D5 pump, which is controlled over USB, along with an Alpha Cool reservoir on the top. That sits like so. At the moment, it's got far too much cable, which needs to be shortened because it could reach pretty much around the entire case. And now we can slip our graphics card in place. It's a relatively elderly GTX 980 with an EK block and backplate, but it looks the part and should do a decent job in this build. I've seen a couple of builds in the G4 case where they have an all-in-one liquid cooler on the floor of the case and then the door hinges up and it all comes together. In this instance, I've gone for everything mounted on the door. So we've got pump res there. Idea is it's gonna go out into the rad, out of the rad, into the graphics card, out of the graphics card, into the CPU block, out of the block, back into the res. In principle, that should work. To recap, I've gutted the original Apple system from this G4. I've converted it to Mini ITX, installed all the big bits and pieces that I require to make it a Mini ITX PC, and all that hardware is on the door. Before I installed the cooling loop, I installed a couple of Noctua 40mm fans at the rear of the case. Hopefully they will help the cooling. I've also tidied the cables in the bottom of the case. I have not yet connected the power to the graphics card, motherboard, and the EPS at the top of the board. The idea is as I close the case, I'm gonna plug those cables in. The alternative is to use extensions and then the cables have to go somewhere. There seems no point. Now it's time to put some coolant in the reservoir, run up the system. Uh, I've jumped across the main power connector there. So I'm just powering the cooling loop. See what happens. The fact the hardware's on the door when I'm filling the reservoir, it's all completely out of sight. Time for power.
This is such a compact PC that it takes very little time to fill and bleed the cooling loop, and the end result is a really attractive Windows 10 PC. When I started messing around with the Power Mac G4 case, I wasn't honestly sure it was possible to put a proper PC inside and make it neat and tidy. I thought there's every chance that when I finished this, I'd then tear it apart and put the pieces back on the shelf. As things stand, I'm really pleased with the result. This PC is gonna remain built. I'd say that's job done. 